let us get started uh, today topic is about all about splunk uh, we'll cover everything from uh, design to yeah so let us take a look at the agenda so what we'll cover here is we'll go to uh, we'll uh, check the architecture components of splunk uh, starting from how you can install the agents to collect the logs how the logs are normalized parsed how those are indexed and then how it can go towards the splunk backend platform you know so you will see all those uh, in the next slides uh, then we'll be cover some design principles uh, uh, what are the things which you have to consider while designing your solution uh, we'll be touching on deployment part uh, giving you some hands-on feel uh, to show you how you can uh, install the agents uh, how the platform is like how splunk looks like uh, what commands you can run there uh, where you can see your dashboards you know and then lastly if you are let's say using a cloud architecture uh, where you are using s3 uh, to store your log so we'll give you also uh, some insights about how you can uh, transfer the logs from your s3 towards the splunk platform so let us get started here okay so in terms of the architecture uh, splunk uh, usually comprise of four main components okay one is the forwarder which is uh, think about an agent a client which is uh, you install on the endpoints then uh, the logs from those endpoints will be uh, forwarded uh, and filtered and parsed towards an indexer indexer is nothing but uh, think about an excel sheet which is just having the raw data so it will you know filter and sort that sort those fields in an excel and put these data arrange this data into multiple buckets you know so we'll come uh, we'll come down to in a bit that what are buckets or what are the different indexes but just like think of where it is the where, where, where the data is stored and from where the data has been retrieved okay this is what the indexers uh, are then the last component is the searcher head so any uh, enterprise security or enterprise plunk tool that you see uh, it has a, a dashboard view where you can search different fields so anytime you search something from splunk it goes to the indexer reads the data and give you the output on the search head this is the last component uh, then i have used one more component which is i here which is just to uh, uh, just to show you as that we have to also do some monitoring of the platform as well so this console is nothing but a monitoring tool to check the kpis of splunk okay so now that we have we have discussed the architecture different components let us take a take some deep dive onto it so here uh, as i explained you you need forwarders first so forwarders can be of two types mainly uh, one is the universal forwarder and the other one is the heavy forwarder okay um, remember forwarders do not store the logs okay for storing you have to use another components like indexer or uh, a log uh, storage platform to store the logs universal forwarders basically are ones which are which we have which we install on the endpoints okay and the heavy forwarders are configured to which which can pull the logs from the universal forwarders so now there is a question that hey why we need two forwarders why we can just use one forward one forwarder so if you are using let's say a heavy forwarder and universal forwarder then your logs can be parsed otherwise you have to send the unfiltered logs towards the indexer component okay now take a look at indexer now indexer is used to receive like log receiving from forwarders log parsing which is to you know uh, parsing means that you know you have to filter what exact fields you need to have uh, it it has licensing it has so the writing capability that when you uh, put the logs into the indexer indexer write those logs into the buckets okay then you need to run the license meter depends on the log size so this is where the license comes in that it checks that whether you have the license uh, what logs you are you are storing you know 
So we can also leverage the techniques like compression if you want to utilize efficiently your license. So this is what happens in the indexer as well. Okay. Then uh, the loss component is a search head which will go and retrieve the logs from indexer. You have to give the IP reporting visualization does on searcher. So every storage component uh, of indexer has to be, uh, you know, uh, the search head will go and search different fields so you have to you know give some related key value fields into the uh, searcher for it to get the logs from the indexer okay uh, uh, most importantly uh, if you think about this architecture uh, when you install splunk you'll get just the enterprise security platform okay uh, which is the premier the app premier platform which you will get and it can be deployed in in different uh, you know ways depending on your use case and your design but uh, if you have a use case where you have multiple where you have the logs coming in from multiple sources then you have to design your architecture accordingly where you will be using multiple instances of of such components you know and making sure that you are you are getting enough availability and efficiency uh, from your logging architecture okay now moving forward in terms of the design dimensions designing is also very important uh, there is good documentation available in the splunk platform where you can see different uh, you know design practices but just to give you an overview uh, there are instances type can be a single instance or a distributed one which is in a cluster format so depending on your traffic your uh, use case your budget you can uh, choose all these options uh, then if you have to once you, when you will configure the forwarding client you have to specify the ports as well uh, uh, which port you will be uh, you will be opening up so that those ports will be also referenced in the uh, uh, in the configuration value you will do in the Splunk platform uh, for troubleshooting purposes there are different directories where for like for example if you are running with some issues you can go into Splunk D dot log uh, you can check cpu memory utilization uh, sos uh, safe searches firebug so these are some of the directories which you need to know uh, if you are doing operations using splunk uh, the command type which you will run on the search head are of different types as well eval racks stats eval and i'll give you a brief uh, some sample some some cam some uh, sample commands as well in the end of this presentation uh, important configuration you have if you have to search you have to go through the props.conf indexes.conf uh, and inputs all these will have important configuration so this will help you in in setting up the parameters and troubleshooting use cases uh, license master is also an important uh, you know part of the design this will give you an indication to uh, how much logs you are getting uh, and you know whether your cost is going up or down you know and how much you are your consumption so it is better to use the right compression or right filtration techniques if you have to uh, efficiently uh, use your license then if you uh, want to remove the duplicate fields from the search query then you can use the filter called dup which will help you to uh, remove the duplicate files from your uh, uh, from your indexer okay then what happens in terms of the deployment topology uh, deployment can be of different types can be a single deployment or a distributed cluster deployment uh, you need to have a deployment server uh, deployment clients and server class so uh, there is an architecture component which is search head cluster index cluster uh, your forwarders which you are running on your clients and there is also a deployment server for example you can use an on-prem deployment model or a cloud model uh, you can use distributed model, you know, so that would would be defining your instances, uh, you know, depending upon your uh, deployment server. Think about like a control plane in a, a data plane uh, way in which, excuse me, the deployment server will be your control plane uh, where you will be, uh, you know, running all the configurations, how you want to set up your instances, whereas the actual uh, instance where it will be handling your traffic will be a data plane for your network. Um, indexes allow faster searching why do have different indexes so in the indexes section you can have your logs or your data stored in multiple buckets buckets can be warm hot uh, depending on the retention period about how much you need to uh, do the retention uh, 
in the in the design it has in the indexes are 11 uh, you can have and then you can have five buckets hot warm cold field uh, frozen thawed thawed depending upon the retention period of your data uh, it starts with 30 days then if you want to store for more days you have to uh, get the logs into different other other buckets as well and you can also create RPAC. this is also a good practice to who can access uh, and like in terms of the operations now uh, to give you some hands-on feel uh, like imagine a use case where where you are uh, where you are done with the design and you want to go to the validation stage so first thing you need to do is to uh, understand that whether you are running any agents or not uh, on your endpoints where the logs are going you know whether the, whether the connectivity is there between your uh, forwarders towards the heavy forwarders or the splunk uh, enterprise splunk so you have to make sure the connectivity is there you have to have the logs coming in in right directories you have to know what filters you need to place on on your endpoints in order to parse the logs you know so you have to have all these details and once you are having those details you can just you know copy download the universal forwarder uh, install it on your endpoint configure it with relevant ports uh, install uh, you have to make sure that you have to also enable the boot start boot starts every time your endpoint comes up the splunk agent will be active as well will will be will get active and can forward the logs uh, uh, towards the heavy forwarder uh, then uh, in terms of the data so this is will like this top right side this is showing you that whether the fields the log the, the logging field which is coming into the splunk backend so there is a, a part there where you can go into the enterprise splunk uh, like dashboard and you can search for the data and like data summary i'll show you uh, web, web, when we go to the tool but this is where you can see the logs actually coming in uh, to the splunk platform uh, in terms of the configuration this is a st standard configuration which you can uh, see in the you, you you can get documentation and it's very well explained to how you can configure all those agents uh, in the endpoints okay so this is about about the agent solution so this is an like just in uh, a snapshot i took from the splunk enterprise where you can uh, once you have the data uh, stored in the splunk uh, in the indexes and when you want to query the data you can have to put uh, the commands here so for example status if you want to like query status 503 You'll become you'll be having all those events coming in which is matching this key value to it okay uh, some basic sql commands which you can see here uh, which will help you to query the data from the search heads uh, it will again think about when you will query the data the search head will go into the indexer uh, like like the buckets where it will find these uh, keywords key value pairs and then will give you the data and you can visualize and you can do a lot of things with this so this is just a uh, brief overview in terms of the uh, alternative design so here in the earlier architecture what we have shown you is how you can uh, install the forwarders into the agents but think about an architecture where you already are storing the logs uh, you are running your apps on aws cloud where you are using multiple accounts account one is giving the data from cloud trail you have config aws config you have access logs in the other account you have also some data fields account number two and all those are going into your s3 bucket now what you can do is first of all you have to create relevant policies uh, like iam role policies of s3 so uh, a splunk agent when you will do the add-on it can go to this s3 and pull the data or you can have sns topics configured which will go towards the sqsq uh, where you can configure a lambda function uh, which will be forwarding those uh, logs uh, towards the splunk backend but uh, for the splunk backend to work you have to do the you, you have to add the aws add-on into the splunk platform that you can easily find uh, the documentation on the web but this is also one of the ways that you how you can configure splunk okay now that what we, we have uh, explained you all this let us go and take a look at the actual dashboard here uh, yeah so this is a platform so when you will uh, uh, download splunk 
uh, there is a trial version so anybody who wants to do some hands-on exercise or uh, just to practice what we have just learned uh, they can just easily go to the Splunk website uh, where there's a uh, option of downloading a trial version uh, so you click that trial version and it will uh, you can easily get the license for that for, for the trial version so so this is how the platform looks like uh, whenever you will be having your applications configured you can easily you know see all your apps uh, whatever where you ever have whatever apps are are giving the data towards the back end uh, towards this platform uh, what you can also see is if you want to as I've explained to you that you have to install the universal uh, forwarders in the on the endpoint so here uh, in this page you can see the uh, web page about the steps which you need to take uh, you need to you can have the installation instructions you can uh, have to set the credentials you know so this will give you a good good guide to how to install the, the universal forwarder um, then uh, there is also a search and reporting tool the like like the search head what we uh, have explained earlier in the architecture here you you can do different queries uh, depending on your data sets and what data you need to have it so you can say for example uh, you know just search the data what whatever you need to have it and you will get those all all data sets from you and there is a so if you want to just play around with this platform there is also uh, some sample logs which are available so you can just uh, do and you know uh, create your own queries um, and do some reporting you know so there is a there is a good good uh, materials available here which you can use to you know, do all these things so yeah that's that's it about uh, Splunk uh, let me close the screen share yeah so I hope that you have enjoyed this video uh, please uh, let me know uh, drop me comments and uh, let me uh, how you how you found this video and uh, until next time i wish you all the best and keep following our channel security pulse it, it means a lot uh, it gives us the motivation to do more of such videos uh, uh, until next time see you goodbye